Good morning, everyone. <laughs> it's always interesting here in the morning. So, do I need that light up there? I don't think I do. Let me get rid of that light. There's enough going on while the videos are happening, so a little less, right? Yeah, okay. <laughs> so, I just saw, okay, so, so, the horses were back early this morning, and it's getting hotter, the flies, and it seems like they already know, oh, we get to be in during the time where things are biting us, right, yes? So they come back early, and right after this video, we'll be going out and putting them up, and uh, Charlie kept winning out there, and I went outside, and I thought, ugh, Bo's not here, our 40-year-old. It's... Every day, is he going to come back? When you go back over to the stall to let him out, is he going to be up? <laughs> it's one of those things. It's, it's the time of this horse has come where you're going to have to expect it will eventually what, pass on. Yes. And so Charlie's down, he, winning for him, going, hmm, okay, interesting. Where is he? Bo has this thing where if he finds a good patch of grass, you know, he doesn't care what anybody else is doing. Uh, he's he's gonna he's gonna take care of that. Okay, that's his his favorite. It's amazing on how you, how you can tell, you know, even though they're just herbivores out there, right? So it's just grass, this that, right? <laughs> right? Yeah, but he will prefer fresh grass this now over hay over anything else that is his thing now he loves his alfalfa hay i can tell you that and we're hoping that it will he won't lose any more weight it's one of those things with old horses such old horses so i'm out there and go, and, and charlie was kind of in a tizzy whereas he's the one uh, who takes care of Bo. uh yeah, so there's that. Sure enough, I look out there. There he is. There's Bo. There, he's here. Yeah, he's now here. Right? Yes. So that's good. But again, this morning, oh, but here's the thing. I watched Charlie, and in the way that he was hollering for him, also told me, oh, he's somewhere. He hasn't expired yet. He hasn't passed away somewhere out there in the field, in the backfield or wherever. He, Char, Bo's still around, right? physically alive, right? due to the fact and how I watched Charlie and how he was reacting. Why? It's interesting with animals when they have a close relationship like that with another animal or their instinct right? takes over, their caring instinct takes over for their buddies out there. Well, if if Bo were to pass away, Charlie would just come back and that would be it. He wouldn't holler for him anymore. He wouldn't, right? Yes, yeah. yeah. It's one of those things, right? You have to observe yourself and how that works. We've never had a horse pass away here yet. So it'll be a new experience and uh, uh, yeah, well, not one that really one wants to have, right? Why can't they just live forever? <laughs> Our good friends, right, out there. Yeah, it is what it is, right? But they're all here. Bo just did his thing out there for a little longer and took his time to come back. Uh, so there is that. Oh, getting back to, thank you. It always remind me. Uh, I have uh, every so often, and because of what I watch on YouTube, this snat, of course, right? uh, it's amazing to me on how YouTube actually can mm, uh, kind of uh, figure out what every individual's preferences when it comes to viewing their channel, right? uh, their outlet. That amazes me. That's I really think that's really cool. <laughs> So, uh, yes, yeah, they slip something else in every once in a while, you know. But when it comes down to it, yeah. So, came across this uh, 
when you know angels are around you. And it started out with, and I didn't watch the whole thing. It was kind of, okay, I can see where that's going. And, yeah, okay. Uh... And one thing that the guy mentioned is, you know, one reason that, you know, we're not always having a look, a look into spirit world is, is why, while you're driving on the road and suddenly you see something, you know, well, that's the paranormal. Well, that's the, you know, some, and you could crash on the road. Okay, well, there's plenty of stuff people are doing in the physical they shouldn't be doing, and that's why they're crashing, right? Yes, okay. But, and I thought immediately, okay, now you're not talking angels. Now you're talking spirits. And here's one thing about spirits. What are spirits? Well, eventually I will be one. Eventually you will be one, right? You have to be an amazing, already formed spirit in order to appear to people like that. It takes an, an incredible amount of energy from spirit world to physically manifest a shape, a form, a mist, a whatever, okay, that then looks like in the shape of uh, 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 for going further where one actually recognizes uh, the person, that's really, really rare. And that's not because we're not spiritually open this or that. It takes an incredible amount of energy from a spirit to be able to do that. That's, uh, yes? Mm. Oh, it makes sense, doesn't it? For a physical existence, for any individual to really achieve, right? An amazing success. This or that. On their own. Takes what? An incredible amount of effort and energy. Does it not? Yes, it's the same in spirit world. So, <clears throat> yeah, sadly, that goes for, yeah. It's a, uh, one could say it is questionable on how much we do conjure up with our own uh, spiritual nature, right? Yeah, that's possible too. Yeah. Uh, it's called the ethereal spirit world. Where the fantasies of people, uh, the fantasies that people, in a way, conjured up, created, yeah, I guess we are... A but we are able to create certain things, right? Uh, and put, the, put those 118, what, 120 something atoms also together, right? In certain ways, right? when it comes to spirit, that then, okay, right? somehow manifest herself, but not in spirit world per se. It's the ethereal spirit world which is another separate realm. Interesting? Okay, all right, all right. Well, one could talk more about that, but uh, when we read the Old Testament, right? when is it possible for Moses or any of our forefathers to actually have that give and take? When they're somewhere on their own, somewhere where, what, the place has been cleaned up, this and that, that's important, right? to create an environment right? that then the two worlds can, what, communicate, yes, with each other. All right, for some people, right? like me, for example, that's possible, what, all the time? Yeah, that, you know what, kind of depends as well on what state I am in. Huh? That's it. There has to be that give and take in a way. It has to be right. I remember from little on that I had a real sense of justice. And I couldn't be, I would not. I was very clear about what was right and what was wrong. And one thing, again, I've mentioned that before, though I was very oblivious. I kept my 
surroundings somehow protected and clean from whatever that was going on out there by what? Reading all the time. On purpose, wanting to be oblivious to what was going on out there. Right? Okay, that, yes, some people are like that. And no doubt that's where some of the talent, that's how the talent and gift grows, right? Yes, when you have that even already as a child. Mm. <clears throat> Jesus went into the desert, right? After some hullabaloo, this or that, and he's going, ugh, this is just getting, uh, it's, it won't matter what I do, this, it's not, and this isn't, uh, I need to have, I need to go and collect myself properly. Even Jesus did that. Jesus gave us a great example of that, going into the desert. And then the three temptations of Satan. I talked about that before, you know, and how it kind of, you know, they don't quite make sense, but it's okay. Then uh, another thing that God did is use kind of these fantastic, again, uh, renditions in the Bible on how people were, on how they are spiritually open and how some are not and on how people perceive things where, okay, this one person in the Bible, you know, had, saw one thing, right? the chariot and the this and the that and going up into the sky, but the people around him saw it as a whirlwind taking him up or something. And again, I said, there's a lot of poetry going on in the Bible. We have to acknowledge that on how things were written down to try to explain right, on what the time, that time was about, how victory came about, right? Yes? Mm. And uh, interesting to me, I did not know that for a long time because poetry wasn't something that we actually did. We, you had to learn poems and this and that by heart and uh, they were pretty simple, um, but uh, did not know that poetry, there's, there, get translate, there's a translation for poetry, right? If then you give it in a more simple form, then what the author of the poem wrote down, now you have to figure out, okay, you make your way to the maze, what was he actually talking about, right, for others to be understood. Interesting. Well, anyway, so there it is. Hmm. I think that most people in the world, I'd say everyone, because everyone has a spirit, experiences a spirit life in very subtle tones. Yes, in very subtle tones. And, uh, and often not recognized as such. Yeah? Yeah. But if you can't recognize the subtle tones in your life when it comes to spirit life, the afterlife, yeah, then uh, it's most likely difficult then to uh, perceive anything greater right, in the right context. Yes? Yeah. It is what it is. Oh, spirit world got really quiet. <laughs> oh, I'm having a, uh, my about every two to three months uh, concoction here, which you can see how it's separated out and it's like doesn't look like what it actually is, but it's red wine. Yeah, I'm not taking enough that I have to worry about the alcohol content. Also, if you'd like to do this and say you're pregnant or you, you know, can't drink alcohol, you don't want to drink alcohol, all you have to do is just leave the bottle open or pour it in something that has a bigger uh, evaporation uh, surface. And I think it takes two or three days. You can go and look it up how long it takes for alcohol from wine to evaporate, right? Then you have non-alcoholic wine, which still has what you want in it, right? It's not the alcohol content that's doing me any good here. <clears throat> this is my iron supplement, my favorite iron supplement. 
a drink. Yep. It's one raw egg, a tablespoon of sugar, and a cup of wine. And I drink that very slowly all during the day, and it really helps right, elevate right, your uh, 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 red blood cells. Right? It's a really amazing concoction for people who are on chemo. Yes, have cancer and are on chemo. Okay, I'm not kidding you. Oftentimes people have to stop chemo because the red blood count goes so far down and said, no, we have to stop, we can't do anymore. Right? Yes. As then you're looking at a whole other problem again uh, as well. I know this works. I know this works because I've, I've uh, treated some people or given some people this advice and it worked. They went back to the doctor and the doctor says, well, I don't know what happened, but yep, you're ready to go again. Yeah, did it save any lives? Mm. Mm, it's very good to drink too. People go, hey, raw egg. You can't taste it in there. Okay, so that's what I do when I feel like, oh, oh, and again, especially now, spring fatigue is really a thing. I'm not kidding. <laughs> it is. <laughs> Helps with that <coughs> as well. And of course, when your iron levels are normal, your energy level is up. Oh. When you spiritually, when you feed your spirit, yes, the energy level of the spirit goes up as well, doesn't it? No? Okay. All right, we're in Deuteronomy 13. Whatever I am now commanding you, you must keep and observe, adding nothing to it, taking nothing away. Aha! You know what? That's the first time I've read this. Whatever I am now commanding you, you must keep and observe, adding nothing to it, nothing, and taking nothing away. That? Right there? was something that was just about drilled into us as children in church. The Bible is what the Bible is, and you don't get to take anything away from it or add anything to it. Oh, that's not what that is, though. We know this is, a, uh, this pertains to the Ten Commandments and in the way, the, the God's direction to Israel, right? Yes? got nothing to do with this whole book that it that it actually means to this book right then people say oh, okay 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 it's just the last book the book of revelations where that is you know mm, really that's it it's interesting to me on how people use the bible as well to what strengthen their stance when it comes to certain things that you're not allowed to go and discover, that you're not allowed to discuss because of the discrepancies, possible lies, false telling. And then you're, what, stuck in, but in your spiritual growth as well. Yes, it's not okay to do that. That's damaging the reputation of God. Hmm? Then one conveniently uses a phrase like this, given by God, to uh, exalt all the books and the men who have written them some women, above God, above God's direction. As something absolute that it isn't. Unless we find God's true words. Right? Yes? All right. Okay. Okay. So, say we uh, uh, 
whatever I am now commanding you, you must keep and observe, adding nothing to it, taking nothing away. Oh, does that pertain to the Ten Commandments? Have they been properly worded? Or do we need to change them to fit whose agenda again? then it's okay, you see? So, with certain things in the Bible, you're being taught, you can't take it, anything away, and, and, and you can't add anything to it. God said so. No, God didn't say so. That's not true. It is used when it is convenient not to do what again. But then, when it actually comes to God's word in the Bible... We do what? Take the liberty to change things. We do. Done. According to whatever fits your denomination, fits your agenda, and fits your finances. Doesn't it? Yes? Okay. Hmm. Interesting. Against the enticement of idol idolatry. Oh, my God. If a prophet or a dreamer of dreams arises among you, offering you some sign or wonder, and the sign or wonder comes about. Oh, something else comes to my mind here right now. And if he, thank you guys, I knew you are going to bring that up again. And if he then says to you, let us follow other gods, hitherto unknown to you, and serve them, you must not listen to that prophet's words or to that dreamer's dreams. Yahweh your God is testing you to know if you love Yahweh your God with all your heart and all your soul. Oh, oh, it has nothing to do with ourselves not being anchored enough. It's again, oh, God's testing you. No, no. Why would he do that on purpose? Want to let you astray. To see if what? You're strong enough? To say, why would he do that? That's not our God who does that. Okay? <clears throat> no. See, again. Yahweh your God is the one whom you must follow. Him you must fear. His commandments you must keep. His voice you must obey. Him you must serve. To him you must hold fast. That prophet or that dreamer of dreams must be put to death. Oh! Since he has preached apostasy from Yahweh your God who brought you out of Egypt and redeemed you from the place of slave labor, and he would have diverted you from the way in which Yahweh your God has commanded you to walk. You must banish this evil from among you. Okay. Let's stop here for a moment. Yes. I have to say, I would not, I'd rather go, you know, okay, not, I can't be a part of that curse. That's, I know the blessings too well. So that's not going to work. Okay, this is not going to work here. This so eh, just go away. Do I have to put someone to death? Now think. Here's the whole people of Israel. Here's one person, maybe two. Oh gosh, make it three, who come and say, "Hey, we have these other ideas. I think they're much better than what you're doing." And the people of Israel are going to go, "Yeah, that's cool. That's how vulnerable they still are in their faith." After everything? Really? What did I say about the ethereal spirit world, right? Really? All them people, all them tribes, having all them levites there, right? Who are what? Keeping watch, watching over their children, all the other tribes, right? And they're having, and that is such a Danger to them? Threat to them? One or two or three people? Rather than saying, wow, okay, you know what? I think, did you, did you, did you drink some blood or something? Did you get confused? As if the people stand together under one God, under the uh, one umbrella of God. That shouldn't be a problem. Those few people shouldn't be a problem. But it is, is okay. Well, let's take your temperature. You must have a fever or something, cause, okay. So, so let's let's just you know, we'll uh, we'll keep watch on you and uh, and and then be prepared to say, well, actually, you know what? It doesn't work that way. 
So one person has the power to make such a difference that they need to be put to death. Really? Rather than, okay, let me tell you why your theory, your dreams, or whatever, aren't working here. Then you pull out the Ten Commandments. This is why it's not working. This is why your dreams don't apply. They have to go along with this, with the Ten Commandments, and they have to go along with the direction of God. What's the person going to do? Either leave on their own, going to look for people who are what? Are going to accept whatever that one has to say or the other one has to say? Or right, they're going to be rehabilitated. Not by force, not by, by just what? The people standing together and saying, yeah, that's not going to work here. <laughs> Sorry. But uh, we can re-educate you. But why would one person be such a threat? Ah, what's going on in our country right now? Why are little small margins of people yeah, with their agendas able to create such a hullabaloo in this country? Just wondering. Yeah. Yes? Anyway, so again, the fear to teach again in a way on how God would be dealing with them people isn't what God's telling them to do. That's not it. It isn't. It's the fear of the leaders possibly having written things down like that, right? To uh, squash the ones they don't want to talk either, right? Right. Was it always wrong when they would bring something up and say, hey, get, hey guys, uh, you know, I mean, everything's good and right to snap, but also following God would mean also, right, and maybe try to uh, alert, ah, now here's the other side, isn't there? Where you may have someone that has gained some kind of spiritual recognition and spirit world and is then used, used, right, asked, to, to give a particular other point, right? not to, right? to enhance what there already is, okay? Then there is that, too. That's always two sides to things. But, of course, in the way that it is here, it's clear, you know, trying to get you away from whom, Yahweh, and start to worship something else again. Are Israelites still that vulnerable? Still. That vulnerable, huh? Hey, 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 I feel for them. I really do. They must have had so much problems there in a way. Or were they just making more problems for themselves than were needed? If your brother, the son of your father, or of your mother, or your son or daughter, or the spouse whom you embrace, or your most intimate friend tries secretly to seduce you, saying, let us go and serve other gods, unknown to you or your ancestors before you, gods of the people surrounding you, whether near you or far away, anywhere throughout the world, you must not consent, you must not listen to him, you must show him no pity, you must not spare him or conceal his guilt. No, you must kill him, your hand must strike the first blow, <laughs> and putting him to death in the hands of the rest of the people following. Well, wouldn't that be called a lynching? Oh, that can't be right in the eyes of God. Besides, it's secretly, secretly. So then you go ahead and you, eh? seducing. So, where is the proof action? How can you get rid of someone you really don't like, don't want to be around, maybe have done something, then decide, ah, you know what? Mm -mm, no, See, this, 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 this is not, uh-uh, no. Yeah, it's, it's in here as it is. I'm not going to say more to it. But it looks like, again, how is this any different from the Quran? Huh? How is it? 
go ahead. Anybody has a different opinion, this and that, or, you know, is trying to uh, show you another way, this and that, and, well, those are infidels now. Those are uh, Gentiles. Though they can be, oh, okay, you killed them. Oh, I thought we had a problem with that when it comes down to it, but here it is in the Bible. Oh, okay, all right. Just saying, something right here. <laughs> I don't think that's right to do. You must stone him to death since he has tried to divert you from Yahweh, your God, who brought you out of Egypt from the place of slave labor. Also, if someone tries to divert you right, away from God, that's trying. They're just trying. So what do you do? No. That's not going to happen. But guess what? How about you come to church with me? Huh? Yes? Let me show you a different way than the way that you obviously want me to take that will lead where? And ask people, so where will your gods lead me? To a curse? To the mountain of, cur of the curse? Or to the mountain of the blessing? Either way in the physical and the spiritual. Simple, isn't it? Can one not ask these questions to people who say, well, but you don't understand that this is necessary now in the world. And this is, this, it has to be so that everybody is accepted, this and that. And that's why we get to do what we're doing, like killing unborn babies, nearly willy, willy nilly, right? For no apparent reason, except for what? You're already being ensnared by what? The God of lust, the gods of lust out there. Yes, which are all just people. No gods like that exist. You're being ensnared by people of lust. And you can't say no. Not possible. So, first time, is that so difficult to ask? You're so confused. You're so, your life is so bad, has been so bad since childhood. This snap. You've never come across what a curse and what a blessing is. And then say, okay, whatever you want me to go and see this snap. And I've, I have been. I have been to many different, oh, come and, and you know, uh, Buddhism and Hinduism and there are some other religions and, Come and have a look and see what, you know, and, and I'd be there and going, I have no idea what these people are doing, but this isn't going towards a blessing. Even though that's what they say. If you pray like this and if you pray like that, that's going to go. And of course, I'm going to say, who am I praying to? Well, it's, you know, what, okay, who am I praying to? Well, you know, so, so then, 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 go off with the conversation. And I'd be sitting there and I'm going, hmm. What am I chanting for? Is my chanting for what they just told me I should be chanting for, which is always for yourself, you know, this, that, going to bring me towards a blessing? Or am I going towards a curse now? What is it? If they don't have an answer for you, you're most likely in the wrong place. Even if they have an answer for you, listen very carefully to how they're answering you. Yes? Anyway. It's, so, again, was God this forceful with someone that still somehow, what, slipped through the cracks? Are we not saying in school, so here's another example, are we not saying no child shall be left behind? Yes? Okay, it's a nice slogan that I don't see applied in school at all when it comes down to it. Because after 12 years in school, if one still cannot read and there's no dyslexia or whatever involved, same with math, where for some reason numbers just don't, and, and it's sometimes that is, but these people usually have some amazing other abilities that then just have something sometimes that is normal for another person cancel out. It's not, not normal. It is as it is for then these people to excel in things no one else can. I've seen that enough times. Okay. 
when we label children with a certain disease or inability or this or that, rather than, no, we got a, we got a very special child on our hands. Oh, the other children aren't special. I'm just saying, okay. But after after 12 years of going to school, a child that has all normal faculties, this still can't read properly, can't write properly, and can't do some just okay. Not even going to go to algebra and calculus and I don't know what. S up to sixth grade math can't do that either. then where does the no child left behind? And how are teachers not recognizing that? Being with, the, with these children day by day by day by day, test by test by test. It takes commitment, a lot of it, when you decide to teach children. And with that commitment comes responsibility. Yes? Yeah. It's really cute. I, uh, the last time I went up and took care of my grandchildren, my grandson is just in, uh, I think he's in second grade now. Is he in second grade or is he in first grade? Second grade. No, he's in first grade. And he was in kindergarten and they had these little, I, I don't know why in kindergarten you can't just let children play and get along together, this and that. Watch out, okay, which one's already kind of bullying others, this and, and address that. That's for me, kindergarten. You want to teach them some things, this and, have them learn how to listen to reading, when you're reading books to them, right? Yes, but otherwise, that's how I had kindergarten, okay? And then, but I could already read. <laughs> when I went into first grade, I could already read, write, and do basic math. Taught myself. Yes, yeah. Well, some kids are like that too. Yeah? Yeah. I don't remember ever going through the ABC, learning how to read, saying words. It's not just read. That was it. Okay. Well, in any case, so he had a little booklet that he brought home and was struggling. Right? You could tell he was struggling. Oh, so he's struggling. So what do we do? You do one thing and one thing only. When they're that young, right? It's just practice. Oh, practice for how long? Every time he came home from school, first he got some time off, right? To calm down from school, kind of center himself, have a snack, right? And then we'd sit down and say, okay, show me what you have to do right? as homework. They already had homework kindergarten come on and uh, so he would bring out the little booklet and he had one per week right? so we go okay let's start reading and in the beginning it was like pulling teeth I'm not kidding you sit there and said okay do you know this word okay short little sentences you know some of them he knew just by looking at it so he memorized it he wasn't reading he just memorized the word <coughs> per se, but, yeah. And uh, we would go on, and he would stumble over the same words again and again and again. Here it was. I had him read every page. He had to read the whole sentence, even if he just memorized it. I didn't care. One time through properly. If he didn't, we would do it again. And first, oh, he was like, ah, oh, ah. Oh. I said, the more ah oh, and ah, oh, and you lean back again, instead of concentrating for two minutes. That's all it took to read that little booklet, or not even, eh, when, once you had it there. I said, it's going to take us a lot longer than that. So eventually, because I what, didn't get frustrated, I kind of go, okay, well, we're going to have to just finish this. And here was my encouragement. Mom and Dad be so proud of you. And you will so be so proud of yourself. Right? So we did this. And in the beginning, it took uh, 15, 20 minutes or more right, to just get through the whole booklet of about five or six pages. And there were pictures, too. So I said, well, look at the picture. What do you think this word could actually mean? This and, that, right? and within a short amount of time, with me consistently 
doing the same thing with him when he would get home, right? consistently right? doing the same exercise and practice with him. And when it came to reading right? and what he needed to read, what was expected of him, he got really good, really fast. And he'd kind of say, Grossi, I'm ready. I'm ready to read. Let me show you. Tuck, 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 tuck. Stumble over a word every once in a while. I said, yeah, put it together. Look at the picture. What could that mean? And yeah, got it. Yeah. We get to the end of the sentence and I go, okay, now read the whole sentence again. And it took us what? Yeah, a minute, two minutes. And he'd be done. And he became much better at reading in a short amount of time, right? Yes, right. sometimes it takes a grandma or a grandpa huh, to make sure what? That no one's left behind, per se. Huh? But it's cool. If that's what one of the sentences that, that you know, people are proud of in schools, just not make sure that you stay true to that. Make sure. Stay true to that. And inform the parents. Don't quite see why there is a problem, but uh, if you have the time, please uh, and guide the parents. They're not the teachers. Right? Some parents have no idea how to do that. Just guide them. Encourage him to stand in front of you or her and, uh, and read what I'm going to give home huh? all week long huh? and also telling a story. Huh? Yes, storytelling also teaches children to read and comprehend reading. Yes, yeah. Anywho. So, well, we wouldn't want to leave any of these people behind either, right? So what do you do? Just one or two people? Come on now. It's not a whole tribe trying to entice another whole tribe. Hey, we're going to start doing this. Do you want to be a part of it? Right? It wasn't like that. They're just talking about a few dreamers here. Right? And again, what were their dreams, really, when it came down to it? Huh? Did the Levites, maybe, or some of the higher-up priests, the snap, felt threatened by someone just out of the regular community suddenly having maybe some kind of a spiritual experience? Hmm. Okay. All right. Just saying. I know what I was told at the age of 14 when I said, well, if Judas was doing everybody a favor by ratting Jesus out, this snad, and then he was put on the cross for all of our sins, which had to happen, this snad, I don't know what, that's what I was told when I was young. Then uh, why is he in the deepest of the deepest hell? Didn't he do everybody a favor? Someone had to do it. Oh, don't question that. I can tell, not with a Catholic. I was told, you just don't have enough faith. I was 14. I feel, felt like I had a valid question here. On the way that I was told about Jesus' death, why it was needed, what it did, Basically, it was right, good and right, to kill Jesus. Well, Jesus wasn't killed. He was giving his lives for our sins. Oh, okay, nice way to put it, too. But at 14, having a question like that, there was no answer except for an accusation. You just don't have enough faith. You have to work on that. Oh, okay. I made up my mind right then and there that I'll find God. I'll find my answers. I will find what I'm experiencing myself with Spirit World somewhere else. And that's what I did. Okay, so let's keep going here. Gosh, I have a lot to say to all this. All right. 
If you hear that in one of the towns which Yahweh your God has given you for a home, there are men, scoundrels from your own stock, who have led their fellow citizens astray, saying, Let us go and serve other gods. If heart are known to you, it is your duty to look into the matter. Oh, now it says look into the matter. With one person, you just put them down straight away. But now here, with more people, you look into the matter. Well, that sure changed quickly. <laughs> Examine it and inquire most carefully. Oh, really? Oh, that's interesting. So basically what I'm being told here, okay, just from reading, I'm not saying that's how it was, is that if it was just one person, to put one person to death for something, per se, right, that what? Huge threat, a huge threat out there to everybody, right? Needs to be put to death right away by everybody. But then when you come across a town with men in it, more of this, then that needs to be carefully examined and this and that. Why? That would be, in my opinion, a far greater threat when you suddenly have a mob going than just one person. Don't you think? This is reversed, people. <laughs> Again, how does this make sense? Tell me how this makes sense. I'm listening. If it is pro proved and confirmed that such a hateful thing has taken place among you, you must put the inhabitants of that town to the sword. You must lay it under the curse of destruction, the town and everything in it. You must pile up all its loot in the public square and burn the town and all its loot. Really? Wait a minute. Why? Didn't they offering it all to Yahweh your God? Wait a second. Didn't they have wars before and they went and they looted and they even took the young girls, left them alive and took them for themselves. And here now everything has to be burnt, though it's their own people, which means Okay, well, you know what? Yeah, get rid of the idols, this snap, the whole loot. Okay, what are we talking about here? Hmm, interesting, huh? Infighting. This is what I call infighting, right? And here's the other thing, too. Uh, it, in the way that it is described, right? obviously it has happened already. Why would God alert to something that's never happened before, right? It has happened. It already had happened with the Israelites. So Israelites were very wishy-washy. Right? Seems sounds like it. Sounds like it to me. But I'm not getting this. Then what about all that? Okay, whatever. Wouldn't the loot and everything from a, a people that truly worshipped other gods that were never a part of the Israelites, this and that, way more unclean? Remember on how they handed out the booty to everybody? <laughs> Just asking. Tell me if you know better than I do, or if you read this in a different way than how I'm concluding things here, on how they, it sounds like, well, there's some odd discrepancies going on, you know, that don't sound like God to me. It is to be a ruin for all time and never rebuilt. From what is thus put under the curse of destruction, you must keep nothing back so that Yahweh may turn from the ferocity of his anger and show you mercy and have pity on you and increase your numbers as he swore he would to your ancestors. If this is just one big threat, I do not believe came from God. Again, they went to this, they destroyed according to the Bible here. They went, to, which I question some too, they went according to the Bible here and how it is written down to all these towns, all these other tribes that were not a part of Israel, okay, were not a part of, of, of their God, and they destroyed them, and then they went and did what? God told them to go and rebuild them. But here, it's going to be left as a sign of what? Destruction? Ruins? Interesting. Why? The town, according to what I'm see, reading here, initially was on the right track. It's 
So that can't be restored. No restoration possible. Isn't what we're reading, have been reading from Genesis all the way to now. Does not, that not sound like God's trying to restore a people? But here the absoluteness of death and punishment then doesn't make sense, does it? Not if it is your own people as well, right? <clears throat> so to me, this sounds more like a kind of power struggle among men. Nothing to do with God. Hmm? And if the Levites would be doing their job properly, again, how did they do their job? It's, it's all new, I get it, but it's how does this really it's like it's so distorted things don't fit together and this is supposed to be the set deuteronomy is supposed to be the second time around right to do what reinforce in a good way right strengthen the laws of heaven what is it talking about, really? <laughs> All right. And have pity on you and increase your numbers, as he swore he would to your ancestors, on condition that you listen to the voice of Yahweh your God by keeping all his commandments, which I am enjoining on you today, and by doing what is right in the eyes of Yahweh your God. I find it interesting that a lot of the endings have... Listen to this now. One more time. Ugh, this is a sentence. People are telling me my sentences are too long. Really? Talk to the people who wrote the Bible. Because they have... This is like a, a whole section here. It's one... There. From what is thus put under the curse of destruction, you must keep nothing back so that Yahweh may turn from the ferocity of his anger and show you mercy. To whom? Wait, okay, wait, 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 wait. Show you mercy? Mercy to whom? To the people who didn't realize? To the people that already are doing everything that they're supposed to? Or to the people here that were supposed to be put to the sword? Who are we talking about here? Or you failed to control your people. You failed to do this, this, and that. So you carry that part of the sin as well? Hmm. Okay. And have pity on you and increase your numbers as he swore he would to your ancestors. Again, it's, it's always on the condition also of... That is constantly brought up. Right? You're going to get more. As you have more, you know you're going to get more. Because that's kind of what it seems like with the Israelites. When you had less, you got less. According to that proportion, the snap. When you had more, you got more. Right? Well, you have more to take care of. That seems to be a real draw. Yeah? As something that really the, the high priests, the Levites, and the whatever, really used as a I don't know, carrot in front of the nose or something. Do you know what I mean? It kind of sounds a little bit like that, doesn't it? Yes. But the last part of it here is on condition that you listen to the voice of Yahweh your God by keeping all his commandments which I am enjoining on you today and by doing what is right in the eyes of Yahweh your God. Then here in the end, what are they doing? They're actually giving God's word. It's almost as if, okay, I told you everything here now, everything else, that's going to seal the deal. So a lot of what we just read here, I believe, had nothing to do with God. That was not God's direction. Okay? okay? Yes? All that was needed ever was what? The second commandment. Don't do that. If you do, right, then either you come back to school and we'll help you right, adjust again to what is expected of us here. All of us, the same thing. One God under the sun. One God in the universe. Our Heavenly Father, done. Or, and move towards what? The mountain of blessing. Or, 
you have to leave. You can't stay here. And that would be very sad. We don't want you to leave. We want you to stay, but not with what you're trying to do here, if that was the case. If it wasn't just asking questions, like I asked questions, right? Yes? You know, a lot of witches were burned because they knew a lot about herbs. That was it. Nothing else. They knew how to help people. Right? Yes? And uh, the church didn't like that either. And instead of working with these ladies together and say, wow, this is really amazing how much you know about this. You know, the knowledge that you have gained, most likely through practice, this is how I did it. <laughs> okay. I was born with that. I had to learn about all that stuff. And with the help of others. And so oftentimes, in the older times, it was grandma, then mother, who were teaching the next generation of daughters right, about things like that. And of course, the knowledge got greater and greater and greater. So by the time it may have hit a daughter or a granddaughter, the knowledge was so great about it that it looked unnatural. Why? Because it was handed down from generation to generation, and every generation had something to give to it. Oh, interesting, isn't it? Yeah. yeah, instead of the church, for example, or the I said, high priest, this and whoever they were, right? working together with these women, going, wow, this is really amazing. Let's work together right? with the principles of creation and the principles of love, prayer, right? asking the angels, asking God for healing for people, this and that. Then together with the herbs, create that atmosphere and energy where then healing plus with the physical elements, herbs, for example, can happen rather than doing that. They did what? Burned these women as witches. Yeah. Why? Because they were such a threat to them? How? The power of God needed to be shown. Really? Interesting? Yeah, I think so. I have no doubt if I would have lived at that time in the Middle Ages, I would have been burned as a witch. No doubt. So, but it is as it is. If they'd have found me. <laughs> <laughs> and then, of course, it is no surprise that these generations of amazing healers uh, of herbal lore and this and that, right? knew a lot about different things when it came to the principles of creation and what was available there out there for us, uh, yes, to, to heal from certain things, this and that. It is no surprise that they turned away from that vengeful, hateful God that wanted your death, as his representatives said. Did, had their followers then execute. <laughs> right? Yeah. People surprised? I'm not. Yeah. But, I said, I grew up with such a stable environment, uh, both in the physical when it came to faith and the spiritual when it came to faith, that that was never a problem for me. But then I did, I, when, when do I live? What time do I live? I live at the time, and that's a wonderful thing, where both, right, right, the existence of God, the creator, when it came to, comes to all that, plus right, the energy of the wonderful things that are out there given to us by God, the creator, for our health, for healing, for prevention of certain things. This, now, we can't do it now and combine, right? yes, and these things and then with western medicine yeah, that uh, there are there have been some amazing things have been done there yeah gotta be careful there too right yes uh, sometimes you have to just leave it in the hands of God and not get too invasive with certain things right yes uh, so balance 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 just found something really amazing and wonderful that now can be done when it comes to amazing things. Okay? 
between the principles of creation and the principles of love. Interesting. We have come in, uh, huh, in a way, a long way, in a good way, in some things. Yes? And they don't seem to be clashing, which is nice. Yes? Mm. You can be into herbs and absolutely just love that realm. And the healing realm. Plus, you can love God. Let God be a part of it. Know where it comes from. Just uh, and have that unity going. That didn't exist in the 1400s, 1500s, 1600s. Right? Yes. They join. Ah. Nice. Never thought of it that way. To tell you the truth, that just kind of came to me. <laughs> huh? Don't we learn a lot while reading the Bible, don't we? And let Spirit World be a part of it. Yep. Write some things that oh, this comes kind of comes across wrong. Oh, was this the cause of some of the things happening? And thank God we've moved out of that. Okay. Restoration. Oh, that's restoration, isn't it? Did you hear that, Gus? Did you hear that? He's like, I love you. You're my mama. You're my best mama. Yeah. Huh? Yeah. Okay. They always come and say thank you after they eat. Bodis, when he came back today, he didn't right go for his food. I don't make him sit anymore because of his knee. It's just hard for him. Uh, so I just give it to him. Okay, are you ready? You know, and then I put it down. And today, he came back to me one more time. Woo, 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 Oh, you need to first tell me how it was out there? Okay. Didn't go straight for the food and gobbled it down or anything. No, he has his way first on that. what comes first. Food is not it. It's a dog. Okay. And in the morning time, oh, they get goodies in their food. Oh, you get goodies in your food, don't you? So uh, you would think they'd go straight for it, especially if two other dogs, right? <laughs> no. Always first. Okay. So, what's good out there? This not Okay. I said, go now and eat. And he went and ate. Pretty cool. All right. That's all I have to share this morning. No, that's all I have to share this morning. God's love and blessings always. May he protect you. And I will talk to you all another time.